my whole life, ladies and gentlemen, my entire life, the end of my life, they will have to write at every disappointment is when I got my biggest door. I, I, I used to, Andre, slip almost straight in the depression until I figured the pattern. Every time, watch this, there is opposition, watch this, and humiliation. Lurking somewhere is a promotion. No way in the world, no way in the world, I've told you three million times, no way in the world should I have ever gone to Morehouse College. No way in the world. No way in the world. Flunking out of high school, parents making me, kicking and screaming. Mood I wouldn't no Afrocentric liberation theology. Say, man, I want to go to Africa at 16. That wasn't on my things to do list. <laughs> Watch this. I'm sitting over there mad. Got an attitude. Hallelujah. Got an attitude. And in the middle of me being there, civil war breaks out in Liberia. Civil war breaks out in Liberia. They take over my school as a military barrack. Take over my school as a military barrack. Well, I say as a consequence of the civil war that took place in Liberia, all of my permanent school records were destroyed. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking back to me. Hallelujah. Now, so I went, watch this, as you all very well know, with a GED, watch this, saying I have no other record. Every year I was at City, I was in summer school. Y'all, y'all laughing, I'm trying to show you something. So this is serious stuff now. What if I'd have had my way? And stayed. And not gone to a place I don't want to go. God, I can't hear nobody. I'm dealing with the humiliation and the embarrassment of the moment. God says, I'm trying to do something for you. And you don't even see where it is. But it will require you for a season doing something you don't want to do against what your plans are. Because I know the long range vision for your life. Every time... I have a promotion. I have a disappointment. I was uh, supposed to uh, go pastor a uh, church in uh, California, in uh, Los Angeles, uh, named after my grandfather. A bishop calls me and says, uh, got a church here named after your grandfather. In California, they got a housing development. They got an education complex. I was in the heart of the hood, uh, and they got 700 people. I said, oh, man, sign me up. I said the church and it got my name on the front. I said, man, sign me up. I says, uh, yeah, I want you to come. Uh, they seen about 700 people. Old man been there since your grandfather signed them there in 76. This is now 99. Uh, he got bifocals, got uh, two hearing aids. I'm like, Lord, if this old man got 600 people in Compton, I'm coming to sweep the whole city. I can go do it. And uh, I go uh, to Los Angeles. I quit uh, my job at NAACP. Go to uh, Los Angeles. Go get this church. And uh, uh, he's supposed to retire at this meeting. He's supposed to retire at this meeting. And uh, uh, we get there on Sevilla at the uh, annual conference. He start crying. He start crying. Saying he don't want to retire. I'm like, man, you got to go. He's say, you don't want to retire. And the bishop say, man, you're a young man. Go on back to Baltimore, uh, and I'll call you in a year. I said, Lord. Uh, so I got all of my stuff on a Mayflower truck uh, and tell them, turn back around. Uh, call back to the NAACP, ask Mr. Informer, can I get my job back? He, Give me my job back. I said, man, this is embarrassing. It's humiliating. People at the NAACP, oh, you back. I thought you... <laughs> All week, I'm just in the hall singing LL Cool J, going back to Cali. And I'm back. And it's 
like Lord. So I, I'm back home uh, for about three weeks, and then after three weeks, uh, the Bishop of Florida calls me. Says, "Man, I heard about what happened to you uh, in L.A. I got a big church uh, they just built. I'm gonna put you in." I said, "Man, if the guy's retiring, I don't want it." I said, he says, no, I need you to come uh, fill this church. It's a uh, major uh, city in Florida. I said, uh, uh, are you sure? He said, he said no, I'm, I'm sure. I'm the bishop. I said, man, I got to tell this guy I'm quitting the NAACP, so I need to know for sure. I just quit three weeks ago, and he done gave me the job back. He said, yeah, uh, I'm sure. So I go back to him and say, for me, the Lord has spoken. <laughs> I thought I heard him right the first time. I, I am not going to Cali. I'm going to Miami. That's what God was saying. I'm going to Miami. He said, okay. Uh, so I packed all of my stuff back up in Mayfly truck, sending it down to Florida. He said, Jamal, everybody wants this church. Don't tell nobody you getting it. I said, okay, I ain't telling nobody. And uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, he says, you're going to preach the close of our state convention. Then after the end uh, of the state convention, I'm going to announce you the new pastor of this church. I said, thank you, Bishop. Thank you. I said, <laughs> I said uh, Bishop, uh, uh, if the guy not retiring, this a new building. What happened to the guy who there? He says, uh, yeah, that's why I need you to take it. Uh, he going to go to jail for tax evasion. I said, I said, okay. So they picked me up from the airport. <laughs> True story. They picked me up from the airport. I still remember it to this day. They picked me up from the airport. We are blocked from the airport. And the driver says, man, you want me to turn the radio on? I said, yeah, turn the radio on. He turned the radio on. As soon as he turned the radio on, the news announced Reverend so-and-so just been cleared of all tax evasion charges. I'm just crying in the back of the limo like Jesus. So I get there and uh, the bishop don't know I know because I just heard. And he said, uh, Jamal, some things done happen. I just need you to preach. I'm going to move some stuff around. I got something in mind for you. So I'm preaching that day like Jesus is coming back at midnight. I'm preaching, I mean, to the bishop wife running around the building. I said, okay, it's over. He said, go on up to the room. This is 99, so we ain't got cell phones. I got the next tail pager. So he says, go up. So I'm scared to use the room phone. Ain't two way on there. It's just one phone. I ain't calling room service. I ain't calling my mama. I'm just waiting on the bishop this is from the 12 noon hour power is now 10 17 p.m and he calls me he says come up to the room come up to the room and all because anything all the presiding elders from florida in the bishop room and none of them will look at me i said oh i said they mad i done got somebody at church and uh bishop come out and says man uh i ain't got nothing for you right now uh come back in a year you come back in a year, I'm going to have something for you. Some stuff is going to open up. So I got to call the Mayflower truck. Send it back to Baltimore. Call President Fumet. Get my job back. And I went through, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest, one of the greatest levels of depression in my life. Said, here I am, a third generation AMA, son of a bishop, grandson of a bishop, and I can't get a church. Said, who in the world fighting to get a church I've been on two different coasts and can't get nowhere couldn't sleep losing weight I don't even want to go to church I'm sitting at home I don't even want to watch preaching on TV I'm, not, I'm just mad with everybody uh, and it was in that season that God gave the vision for this All right. but had I not had watch this enough doors shut Watch this. This wasn't in my plan. Being in Baltimore was not on my things to do list. I'm looking like Jonah to go to the other side of the world, never to come back again. And God says, you can't even see it now, but this is what I got for you. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I made the commitment in my mind that in my whole ministry, I want to make it on my own. I do not want to be in a place where my parents got to make room for me. My gift got to make room for me. The next year, my father becomes Bishop of California uh, y'all ain't talking back to me so I'd have been under what I was running from four years later watch this the church in Florida had to go through a foreclosure oh God I can't hear nobody you don't understand it while you in it 
But God, watch this, will sometimes say, do you trust me? Even when it don't make sense, even when you got to explain yourself to other people, even, watch this, when your desire was confused for my will. Y'all just missed that. That's the best thing I done said all night. When you think your desire is his will, you do not know. Watch this. God's will for your life. Watch this. Until you don't want it. If you want it, it ain't from God. God, y'all didn't hear what I just said. Jesus said, let this cup pass from my mouth. I, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Your debt, watch this, your debt is going to be connected to your disappointment. And if you haven't been broken enough, then you've not been broke long enough. God, watch this, will use your debt. Hear me. He will use your debt simply to get undivided attention. That's how unannounced bills arrive. Things that weren't even broken fall apart. He said, I can't hear from you. So let me watch this. You cannot be humble if you don't know humiliation. You don't know what it's like. Watch this. Until God gets you into the place where you got to ask for help but don't have the strength. I'm talking to 50. I'm talking to 15 of you in the room. So watch this. God is purging you to see how long will you suffer in silence. Because if you can't talk about that demon, you are not ready for deliverance. Because my deliverance is connected to declaration. So as long as I'm silent, Satan is winning. God help me. But when I can start talking about stuff is jacked up. This is a mess. I cannot believe I'm struggling like this. When you start talking that thing out, y'all ain't talking back to me. When you crying, having an asthma attack, and trying to breathe at the same time, and you got to say, God, I got to trust you in the middle. Hot. There's only 50 y'all that been here where you mad at God but still love him. God, I can't hear nobody. You frustrated with him, but you still worship him. He, he don't confuse you, but you still give him glory. God said, all right, now I can do something for you. I just wanted to see whether you will come clean with a broken heart. Hallelujah. Here's the last one. And the last one, ladies and gentlemen, is trapped in the Lord's prayer. The last one is trapped in the Lord's prayer. Forgive us our debts. Here's the rough part. As we forgive our debtors. Can you imagine that for some of us, what is holding back supernatural intervention is you have not yet forgiven who owes you. And I don't want you to limit the argument to finance. They owe you. I'm talking about the person in your mind where you say, they going to pay for this. God, I can't hear nobody in here. I'm the person who in no uncertain terms, hear me, legitimately, I shouldn't forgive. I have grounds to have beef. My feelings, watch this, are authentic. Anybody who I explain it to will see my side. 
Anybody who knows what happens, know they was in the wrong. And my test is, forgive them. My ability to forgive is connected to his authority over my debt. The hardest thing I done given you all night. Your human relationship with somebody who is inequitable. Can I forgive the person who's not in my weight class? Who doesn't deserve my company? Who for real, for real, I would be offended. Watch this. If they even speak. I ain't talking about hugging me. I ain't talking about shaking my hand. For you to speak to me is offensive. And so I wonder for us tonight, the way in this room, have you ever considered that your level of debt may be connected to the amount of people you're mad at? To the amount of people you've not forgiven. And for the amount of people you still hold in your spirit. They have made you emotionally bankrupt. How do you have the love of God and lost the power to forgive? I'm sorry for jumping you off from the back tonight. This is not what you came for. But I want you to lift up that hand. I want to pray for you. And Sean, we can go. Don't hold up your bills, please. I want you to hold up your phone. God, I need divine intervention. Hold that phone up, please. I need you to heal who I don't want to talk to. God, I can't hear nobody in here. God, I need you to heal my heart. For whose text I don't return. God, I need you to intervene for whoever it is in my life. Who has the uncanny ability to always turn conversations into arguments. God, I need you to heal my heart for somebody who doesn't even have the maturity to apologize. God, I need you to purge me with hyssop. Make my heart cleaner than snow. You can't bless me with this sitting on my chest. God, you got to get this monkey off my back. God, I pray that you forgive me for every person I hurt on this phone. Who I broke on this phone. Who I let down on this phone. God, forgive my debts as I forgive my debtors. Lord, I forgive my mother. I forgive my sister. I forgive my uncle. Forgive my former best friend. I forgive my neighbor. God, I've never said this out loud, but I I need to say this. I forgive myself for being my own enemy. 
for sabotaging my own blessings. For keep going back to the same foolishness. Thank you, God. <laughs>